Good morning. If you're a member of Selene Missionary Baptist Church down in Tull, your pastor would like to say good morning to you. hope that the devotion you get today is going to be beneficial for you. If you're not a member of Selene Missionary Baptist Church and you're watching this because it's been shared or other means of uh, communication methods we have today, I'd like to say welcome to you this morning. I want to start off by answering one of the questions that y'all sent. That is not the long black train in the back you hear. I just want you to know I can't. We live a couple miles from the track, but that's not the long black train coming to get me during this. We're going to take a look at the book of Romans this morning. The book of Romans, and we're going to look at chapter 8. Book of Romans chapter 8. And we're going to take a look at verse 15 specifically. We're going to take it down to verse 15. So you want to look it up on your computer there or get your Bible real quick. We're going to look at the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 15. While you're finding that, to the members of Saline Missionary Baptist Church, we will not be meeting as a congregation this Sunday. We're going to honor our obedience to civil authority, and they are requesting that we not meet. And I think that we've all seen examples of what happened whenever you get into a congregational size, and that's unfortunate, and we don't want to have that experience down there. And so we'll just take it week by week, but you can join me this Sunday. On 101.1 FM, The Answer, 101.1 FM, The Answer, or watch live on my Facebook page uh, at noon this Sunday for the message. Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15, says this, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship, and by that we cry, Abba, Father. Let me just break it down for you and kind of put it into context as we deal with the uncertainty of the day that we live in today. Which incidentally, we're going through a hard time as a nation right now. We're going through a time of uncertainty. Events are unfolding hour by hour, uh, sometimes play by play. And our hearts go out to those that are experiencing uh, kind of at ground zero, if you would, uh, the most severe of the impact of the COVID virus 19 right now. So we need to remember them in our prayers. But in the midst of all this, we need to draw on our history as a nation and look back and remember that there have been other times that are just as severe uh, that we have survived through. And I could give you a long list, but uh, if you've been around any time at all here in this country, you know that we've survived many wars, we have survived many diseases, we have survived many internal conflicts, we have survived many other times of challenge where I think Satan has tried to break us apart as a nation. Uh, one good thing about going through the times that we're going through today is we find out what people are made of. Uh, we find out that if we are weak, we need to grow strong. We find out that if we are strong, we need to share our strength. And we find out that we need each other and we really need to depend upon each other. And I would say that's the benefit of being a member of a church community, that you have a network of individuals that you have built relationships with. And that's the importance of going to church. And I know some say, well, I can go out there in the woods and I can worship God just as much. I want to tell you something, in times like this, that tree back behind me is going to help you like the member sitting next to you. So you need to develop relationships within your church and your church community that during times like this, you have somebody that you can draw strength from. And one of the things that it's beneficial to draw strength from is you have somebody to share your fears with. Now, there's nobody greater than God that we can share a fear with. And there's no way we can go that we can't get relief from our fear than to the Lord in prayer and to his word that we just read. And let me share with you why. Go back to the verse and let's break it down. For you did not receive a spirit. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells you. That is, that is God's 24-7 presence within your life to remind you of what he's done for you, what he is doing for you, and better yet, what he's going to do for you in the future. So we have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us today as a child of God, and that's what separates us as far as those who know Christ as their Savior from those who do not know Christ as their Savior. Now, you cannot have Christ as your Savior, which means you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and be a tough guy and win the tough guy competition. I get that, and you can fear nobody because you're the biggest guy. But the problem is, as time goes on, these bodies that a lot of times we take confidence in they begin to develop weaknesses and they begin to become frail and all those things that we counted on for our strength to overcome our fear in these bodies diminishes over time but the strength and the spirit of god can actually increase in giving you greater peace over your fear he said in verse 15 for you did not receive the spirit that makes you and this is an important phrase a slave again to fear that kind of goes back to what i said a minute ago 
before you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you had certain fears that could not be resolved because you didn't have the strength of the Holy Spirit living within you. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, not only do you have the things that you bring to the table, maybe your education that's given you a good knowledge so that in times of uh, uncertainty you have that knowledge to draw on and maybe skill sets that you have that can help you be a survivor if you want to think of it that way in difficult times. But there's nothing that completes your ability to resist and to overcome fear as having the Spirit of God living within you because you see what that gives you as a child of God is to know that no matter what happens today, no matter what they show on the news, no matter what gets put across the social media, no matter what happens, we have the knowledge and peace of knowing that when all this battle here on earth is done, we get to go to heaven and we get set free from all the challenges here on earth. He said we were not given a spirit of fear that we might go back under that fear that we lived under as a lost person, but we've been given a spirit that will help keep us from living a life of fear. And what the world needs to say today, what the world needs to see today, are Christians who are living confidently in fearful times, not succumbing to the fear that the world is experiencing because the world has no hope, because the world does not have Jesus Christ. This is our opportunities as Christians today to go out and to live fearless and to show the world that in spite of all the challenges that are going on, we serve a God who did not give us a spirit of fear, but we serve a God who set us free to live free in fearful times. This is Brother Hammer, Pastor of Selim Missionary Baptist Church down in Tull. I hope that you have a great day. I hope this helps. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and if you would, join me. Father, I just pray that today, that you just bless the day before us. We do not know what the hour holds. We don't even know, Lord, if we have a few breaths or we have many breaths, for you know our appointed time. So help us as your children not to go back under the fear that we've been delivered from, knowing Christ is our Savior, but help us live the example before our friends, for our family, uh, for our business and work associates, and may we just, Father, go about living fearless, showing others what you can have when you have Christ as your Savior. We ask all these things in the name of Christ the Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Y'all have a great day.